In this video, we will solve this LP using the big M method. Previously, we solved the same problem using the two-phase method. And uh, just like with the two-phase method, we start by converting the LP into the standard form. To convert the LP into the standard form, we add the slack variables to all less than or equal to constraints. We subtract excess variables from all greater than or equal to constraints. And as a result, we have an LP in the standard form, which has only the equality constraints and non-negativity of all the variables. All right, so now part B with the big M method is setting up the big M problem. To set up the big M problem, we go over every single row of our LP in the standard form and see if we have a starting basic variable given by slack or excess that we could use for initialization of the simplex steps. Clearly for the first row we can use the slack variable S1 as the starting basic variable. Then for the second row, we don't have slack or excess. We introduce the artificial variable A2. So every time we have the equality constraint, we introduce an artificial variable. And for the third constraint, the excess variable cannot serve as the starting basic variable because E3 would be equal to negative one once we set all the other variables to zero. Therefore, we introduce the artificial variable A3 here. So now, just like with the two-phase simplex method, we want to drive the values of A2 and A3 to zero eventually, whenever it's possible. And uh, in the big M method, we also do that, but we do it differently. We do it by penalizing the positive values for A2 and A3 by subtracting a2 and a3 from the objective with some very large coefficients. So you would have maximize 6x1 plus x2 minus m times a2 minus m times a3. So this big M coefficient is essentially treated as plus infinity. And whenever a2 or a3 is greater than zero, our objective is going to tend to negative infinity, which is uh, terrible for maximization. So whenever it's possible, a2 and a3 will both be equal to zero in the optimal solution for our big M problem. Next, uh, we'll specify the constraints, keeping in mind that we add the artificial variables a2 and a3 to rows 2 and 3 respectively. The first constraint remains unchanged. We add a2 to the second constraint. And then we add a3 to the third constraint. And we still have non-negativity of all the variables. Next, we are going to initialize the simplex tableau. So let's call this step initialization. To start with, let's denote the objective by Z and let's move all the variables in the objective to the left. Now we are ready to set up the preliminary tableau. Why did I call this preliminary tableau? Because you cannot really use it to start the simplex steps because we have a basic variable, in fact, two of them that have positive coefficients in row zero. So to initialize, we need to get rid of these big M's in row zero. And we do it by multiplying this row by negative M and adding to row zero and multiplying this row by negative m and adding it to row zero. To eliminate both m's from row zero, what we're gonna do, we will replace our original row zero with row zero minus m times row two and minus m times row three. 
so the rest of the table remains unchanged so i just copy it now when we multiply row 2 and 3 by m and subtract from row 0 what we're gonna get for this entry right here is gonna be minus 2m minus 6 then the entry for x2 is gonna be 2m minus 1 the entry for s1 remains 0 for e3 is going to be m for a2 and a3 the coefficients will be 0 because this is how we picked the multipliers for row 2 and row 3 in order to eliminate these entries here and for the objective we'll have negative 7m so now we see that uh, we have a proper simplex tableau and we can start the iterations of the simplex method So let me copy the tableau we produced at the previous step. So we start by selecting the entering variable. An entering variable must have a negative coefficient in row 0 and there is only one candidate for the entering variable which is x1. So x1 is going to enter the basis and we perform the ratio test to determine the leaving variable. For that, we only pay attention to the entries in this column that are positive. For the second row, we have the ratio of 6. And for the third one, the ratio is 1. We pick the minimum of the two. This row is going to win the ratio test. This will be our pivot element. All right, now we are ready to compute the step one tableau based on the step zero tableau. So here I copied the last row of the step zero tableau. We only need to replace the basic variable in that row with x1. We were able to just copy this row without any changes because the pivot element was equal to one. If it was different from 1, then we would have to divide the whole row by whatever the pivot element is. To obtain step 1 tableau, we need to eliminate all non-zero entries in this column. For row 0, this means that we need to multiply row 3 by 2m plus 6 and add it to row 0. We will obtain 0, 2m plus 6, plus 2m minus 1, it's going to be 4m plus 5, 0, m minus 2m plus 6, is going to be minus m minus 6, then we'll have 0 for a2, 2m plus 6 for a3 and then 2m plus 6 minus 7m for the objective. This completes row 0 of step 1 tableau. To update row 1 we just need to replace what we have in row 1 right now with the sum of that row and row 3. To compute the new row 2, we need to multiply row 3 by negative 1 and add it to row 2 in order to eliminate this element right here. This completes all step 1 computations. We obtained the step 1 tableau and now we are ready to perform step 2. So we need to select the entering variable and again there is only one candidate for the entering variable because there is only one variable with a negative coefficient in row 0 and this would be the variable E3. So next we perform the ratio test. The focus is on the column corresponding to the entering variable and we are looking only at the positive entries. There is only one 
So rows 1 and 3 don't participate in the ratio test. And for row 2, we have 5 over 1, which is 5. There is only one participant in the competition. So row 2 wins the ratio test. And this is our pivot element. So we perform the step 2 computations next. To start, we can just copy this row right here without any changes because, again, the pivot element is 1. If it was uh, something different from 1, then we would divide the row by the pivot element. So the basic variable in this row is now E3 that entered the basis and replaces A2 in the basis. So we write E3 here. And next we update all the remaining rows by eliminating all the non-zero entries other than the pivot one in this column. We start with row zero. To obtain zero in this position, we need to multiply row two by m plus six and add it to row zero. Next, to update row 1, we need to add row 2 to row 1 and replace row 1 with the result. And finally, to compute the new row 3, again we add the row 2 to this row and replace the previous row 3 with the result. All right, we obtained the step two tableau and we are ready to perform the next step. We see that there is still one negative entry in row zero, negative 19 for x2. So x2 is going to be our entering variable. And then when we try to determine the leaving variable, we see that there are no positive entries in this column. Therefore, there will be no winner of the ratio test. And note that this tableau is actually feasible for the original problem because both artificial variables are equal to zero. So we can just drop these two columns here. So we conclude that because we found a column with the negative entry in row zero and all the non-positive entries in the corresponding column, we conclude that the problem is unbounded. To conclude, I just wanted to show the two-phase tableau and the big M tableau next to each other, so you can clearly see they're identical. Twins.